My name is Evie Zimmer, and I'm a grad student at YSU, and I've been asked to do this little video with you. Uh, everybody should have gotten a little kit with canvas, some brushes, and what else? Oh, yeah, paint. Paint. Can't do this without paint. You're also going to need a couple other things. A container for water. I find cottage cheese containers are they're just the right size. And they're stable because they're big on the bottom. They don't fall over easy. You'll also need some paper towels because you don't want your brushes to be too wet. Sometimes after you rinse them, you got to dry them off a little bit. So you also should have gotten a printout. And I put mine up here. I actually gridded it off so I can see where everything goes a little bit better, but you don't have to do that. Uh, we're going to be making these paintings our own, so they don't have to look exactly like that. We can make them look however way we want to. There are paintings. So I had a false start. That's why I've already done this, uh, because I thought I was recording and I wasn't. I'm kind of new to this recording stuff. So what I, I'm doing first is I'm going to start with sky blue, which is color A500. And you should have one of those. I'll put it up close so you can see sky blue. And I put a little bit on my little plate. Hopefully you have plates. These are Dixie plates. And they got a little bit of a coating in it. If you have regular paper plates, the paint soaks through. Um, styrofoam I don't recommend because they're bad for the environment. Um, but if you have a palette, use that. Um, I don't have one right here. I don't usually use acrylic paint. I use oil, so I have a different type of palette. But these plates work just fine. So you want to squeeze out some of this paint onto your paper plate, the sky blue. Um, not too awful much, but a good amount because we're going to cover the whole thing. Now you should have gotten a large brush. So use the large brush. Water down your paint a little bit because we're just going to put a thin coat of paint on here. Uh, we don't want it real thick. We want it to dry quickly. Uh, so we're just going to water the paint, take a little paint water and put it in your paint and start covering your canvas. If it's too thick, put a little more water in it. And away we go. Just a nice thin coat. And we're going to paint over it anyway. Don't worry about brush strokes or any of that. Just cover the whole canvas with this sky blue. Nice thin coat. Not too much. We'll get into brush strokes and all the thick stuff later, but right now we just want a nice, even blue across the whole thing. And you do that, and I'll do mine, and then I'll be back. Hey, I'm back. I covered my canvas. It's all blue. And now what do I do? Well, I like to have a little bit of an outline, and on this one, everything is outlined. So, and that'll give us a, a something to color it. So we're going to do the outline, and we're going to do it lightly because we're probably going to paint over it again. And I'm going to use this thalo blue. It's color A504. And I'm going to water it down a little bit like I did with the other blue. Just no, don't put too much on, on your plate. And you can pick any brush that you feel comfortable using. I like to use the flat one for doing this kind of thing, and I can use the side of it. Use it sideways so it makes a thin line. But you can use a round brush, any of the brushes you want to. Whatever, whatever makes you feel comfortable and you feel good using. So I'm going to put a little water with it, with that blue. And I still have some of the light blue, lighter blue from before. Maybe mix a little of that, because I don't want to get too awful dark, because we're going to paint over this a little bit. And we're going to say, okay, about a quarter way in is where this thing starts. And it looks like an abstract tree. So the quarter is about here. I think I need a little bit darker. And I'm going to try to mimic what Van Gogh did. Let's try that. And it goes kind of down. And then there's a thing over here. And this is pretty easy. You can make it however way you want to make it. Make it your own. Or you can try to make it more like his. But we're trying just to get a nice outline right now. 
We can change it later. The nice thing about acrylic is you can paint over it. Uh, we also have a little thing over here. Give me more paint. So we're just getting a little sketch in here. So we have guidelines to go by. And then he's got some swirly things. And then down around here somewhere, right there, we want to make that little dip. And then over here, comes out the other side. We have the little mountain thing. And then it goes up. And you can play around with it. It's not an exact science. Just make it however way you want to. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to match what Van Gogh did. You know, there's a little bit of circly things that happen here. But we can get more into those details later. We just want a general idea of where everything is. Okay. And if you want to let that dry a little bit, you can. And rinse out your brush. Now we're going to get to the fun part. So, you can't tell on my printout because I didn't have a good printer. But I do have my iPad where I can see the colors better. See all that yellow and white in the sky? We're going to work on that next. So, since my plates were so small, I got another plate. And I'm going to squeeze out some titanium white. A pretty good amount, because it looks like there's a lot of white in there. And I'm also going to squeeze out some of this lemon yellow, color A100. Not as much of that, but we do need some. And we're also going to use some of this A108, orange yellow. Just a little bit of that. And we still have some of our blues. And if you want to, we also have a third blue called cerulean blue. You can put a little bit of that on your plate, too, if you want to. Oh, my phone's ringing. Should have silenced that, huh? I'm going to pause this for a minute and turn off my phone. I'm back. So now I have on my other little plate, I have the white, the yellow, and the orange. And I still have a lot of blues left, so I can mix some blues in with it if I want to. So if you look on your picture and see where that swirl is, it's pretty much in the middle here. So we're going to take some white paint. Let's see. Pick a brush that you like. You're going to be making little marks. Van Gogh was an Impressionist, and part of the Impressionist style was they made lots of brush strokes, lots of little quick brush strokes. So that's what we're going to do. Um, add some water to make it a little bit thinner. And that swirl looks like it's Right about here is where the middle of it is. And I think this brush might be a little too big. I'm going to change brushes. I'm used to painting, large paintings, so I use big brushes when I do that. Let's see. A smaller brush. I'll use this one. So we're going to start this swirl. Kind of like this. And you can paint over your tree because we're going to start painting again over it anyway. So, but at least you still have the outline you'll be able to see. So we're going to use this white, and we're going to make these little short, quick strokes. And I think I'm hurrying a little bit much because I'm doing a demonstration. I'm, but take your time. Don't hurry like I'm doing.
So that's a little quick strokes. You can add some water to your paint if it gets too thick, too dry. Now he did his painting with oil paint, which is a little bit more blendy uh, than acrylic. But this stuff dries really fast, so we're using this. So the bottom part of the swirl, really white here, it kind of goes like this. Right? So we're just going to keep doing these little marks. And after we get lots of them done, we'll start adding different colors to them. And while we're doing this, I see that there's also little circles. It looks like there's many suns. Only one big one over here, but those other little spots kind of look like suns too. So we're going to do some of those. Might as well put them in now. But you can put them anywhere you want. Make it your own, however way you feel like doing it. That's the fun thing about painting. You can do whatever you want. And then the big one. The big sun is yellow with a little bit of orange in it and a little bit of white. But since we painted the whole thing blue, if we just put yellow right there, it's not going to show as yellow. It's going to show some of the blue through. So we're going to use white and we're going to make, make some of that blue white so that we can cover it with the yellow. And around the edge, if you look at your picture, there is a little bit of white going around. And while we're doing white, we might as well do the part that's down here. Part of the mountains. And we'll go along the edge of our outline here. It goes all the way over to here. And then there's a little bit on the other side too. So we'll come over here and do some on the other side. Now we can get really creative with our colors. So we can take the white, maybe put a little bit of yellow here and there. I think it needs more white before I get yellow though. So we'll put some more white in there. You can mix some little blue spots too. And you can start making these lines a little bit thicker. And try to blend them out a little bit with the blue. So I'm going to take another brush so I can go back and forth with the blue and the white. and blend them together just a little bit. And 
and draw around here, I'll cut some blue. And then I can blend the white with it while it's still wet. Kind of make them go together a little bit more. Let's get that big brush out again. Very good. And you can even use a little bit of that dark blue if you want to. Just to accentuate that spiral thing. Let's go back to the white. I silenced my phone, but I didn't silence my alarm. So, I guess I have to go and do that, and then I'll be back. Okay, let's continue making our little lines. Now, this kind of thing works better when the paint's a little bit wet, so you can kind of smear them together a little bit. So that's why I have several brushes going at the same time. Because this dries pretty fast. We don't want it to dry too much because then you can't blend it. Then we can let some of those lighter areas come down a little bit. So we're just going back and forth with the blue and the white. And after that, we'll add in some yellow. It kind of looks a little stormy after a while. And sometimes I get a little too much blue mixed in with my white on my brush, so you can just rinse it off and wipe it on the paper towel. And then you can get back to the white again. It's okay to get a little bit, so it's kind of blendy looking. But not too much, because then it stops blending. And if you want to mix different shades of blue, you're welcome to do that, make it more interesting. I 
And these all kind of run together after a little bit, and that's kind of what we want to do. I don't like the way that looks. Let's make those lines a little neater. So we got this nice stormy sky going on. And you can add darker blue. <laughs> you can add darker blues and different mixtures of blue if you like. You want to be more creative. I'm just going to do basic because we don't want to get too complicated in the video. But we're going to try to fill up the entire sky with the blues and the whites. And then let it dry a little bit and go back and add some yellows. And I notice there's a little bit of darker blues here and there, especially on this side. So let's put some of those in there. It's quite a bit in this corner. Don't let your paint get too dry, then it won't, it won't blend in really well. And the lines kind of go like this over here. That dark blue adds a nice contrast. I like that. I have to get a little more of that. And I want everything to blend pretty nicely, so I don't want to let it dry too much. And it doesn't have to look like the picture. I keep saying that, but it doesn't. I know a lot of you probably try to make it look like the picture, which is okay, but it doesn't have to. You can make it your own, your own starry night. And I notice there's a little bit of darkness up here. Let's get some dark strokes over here. And don't worry too much about your brush strokes. You're supposed to see them. Paintings are paintings. They're supposed to have brush strokes. So just add some of the dark wherever you feel it looks good. You can mix it with the light, lighter blue, and the white. However way you feel like doing it. But we're just going to worry about the sky first. Take some blue here. Get some blue mixed with the white in some places would be nice. Get some nice little blues in some place. Oh, I think there should be a little brown sunny thing here. There should be one on the other side, too. Let's do that. Yeah, let's put one right here. And let's put one over here. And then we'll use the blue. Blend it in a little bit. Go back to the dark blue.
And I notice right here in the original painting, there's a little bit of green. So I'm going to take some yellow, just a little bit with the corner of my brush, and put it on top of the blue all to fill it. And maybe a little bit of white too. Okay, so with that nice aqua color. And we can start adding a little bit of yellow here and there because I see that there's lots of it in the sky. There's some right here. Maybe we should let that dry a little bit more before we go adding yellow in there. Let's go back to the art. Make sure we had lots of work in there too. This one here, I want to make sure I got it covered good. These little spots here. How's that so far? I'm making it nice. Okay, well, while that dries, it's got to dry a little bit before we can put any more yellow on there. I think I'm going to make this a little bit more white. Make sure my brush is clean or the white doesn't look white. If you look right in here in this part, you notice how white that is. So I think I'm going to do that on mine. Make the paint a little bit thicker. Put some white right in there. Ooh, I got too much water. on the other side. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brushes. And while the sky is, is drying a little bit, we're going to work on some of this stuff down here. We're not going to get real detailed because I know a lot of you aren't artists and you're not used to painting much. So we're just going to do uh, something similar, but not, not all the unless you want to. You can put it all in if you want to, but we don't have to. We just want to have a nice relaxing time making a little painting. So, rinsing all my brushes. If your water gets too too dirty, you might want to change your water because even if the if you want to make something white, and even if there's a little bit of color in your water, it can change the white paint to whatever color the water is. And sometimes we like our whites to be very vibrant, clean whites. So you may want to change your water. I think I will change mine. And then I'll be back again. I have returned with clean water. So now what I want us to do is work on this part. All this really dark area, we're going to work on that. And when we finish that, then the sky will be dry and we can put in the yellows. So I'm going to use the thalo blue. 
that we were using before, color A504, the darkest blue in the package you got. And it's pretty dark, but if you look on your printout, it's not quite as dark as what it is here. So if you want to, you can just use the straight blue, but if you want to, you can add a little bit of black to it to make it darker, or a little bit of brown, whichever one you want. I think I'm going to go with I think the black for this one. So I'm going to put a little bit of black on my plate by my dark blue. And I'm going to use my brush and mix them together. Just take a little bit of the dark blue and a little of the black. <laughs> black is in first row. Let's mix all the black in with it. There. So now I have a really dark, dark blue. I always add a little bit of water. I don't really like how thick acrylic paint is, and I, I almost never use it straight. I always put a little bit of water in it to mix it up. So that's still wet, so I'm going to leave that. But I'm going to do this part over here and try to make it similar to what's on the picture. Mix it down here. I know it's not exactly like the picture, but that's okay. And it comes up here, like a little mountain. And this part here is pretty dark, so I'm just going to paint that whole part in there. I think right here, dip it down a little bit. Kind of goes up like that. So I'm going to paint that all in. And over here, it starts to break up a little bit, just some feathery lines like that, while well, the rest stays pretty dark. And I'm going to outline these little mountains, go like that, kind of down like this, and then this mountain. I'm off a little bit. I don't. I don't match exactly the picture, but that's okay. Close enough. And I'll try to put some of the darkness in it down there. And then there's this last one. There's some dark parts in there. And there's some dark lines that come down over here. That's not there. And then on the other side, even this mountain comes down here. Like that. And we have to let it go. So if your painting is dry up here, we can continue with that part. That's pretty dry. So I'm going to do it. I can still see where I made my initial sketch with the, the lighter blue. So I'm going to start going down like this. And you can make little teeny strokes like we've been doing for the sky. So we can copy the style of Van Gogh. I think this is supposed to be a tree or some kind of bush or shrubbery. And I try to follow the way his marks are made with mine similar. But you don't have to. You can do anything you want. Just like Bob Ross said. Happy little trees. Now when I get to the bottom here, I may, I'll start following the lines that are made on the picture there. Now my easel 
it comes up too far here, so I'm going to have to hold my painting up a little bit to get that part. So down here, I'm going to start doing some of those circle things. He's got all kinds of colors in there. Lines that go across. Looking like things that are in the distance that you can't really make out, but you know they're there. And it's real dark down here on the bottom, so I'm just going to put that in there. And it does look like it's a little bit swirly. A lot of his lines look kind of swirly. I'm going to stay with my blue-black mixture. I may have to mix them up. And put some of these dark areas in. And this kind of goes out like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to make some more dark. And this part goes out like this. And it doesn't really match my initial sketch perfectly. That's okay. So we can do swirls in here or whatever we want, straight lines up and down, a mixture of swirls and straight lines, whatever you want to do. I think I need to mix some more black and blue together, so I'm going to do that. Hmm, it looks better on camera than it does in real life. And you can go back and forth with the paint colors like we did in the sky. There's a little bit of white through there, but not a lot. There's a little yellow too. But we're not going to touch that until this dark stuff dries. Because that will make a real big mess if we do. Okay, where's their dark stuff on the other side? I'm using this really thick brush. I may have to change it. Maybe we can do some of them little round things. So I'm going to change my brush. I'm going to use a round one, I think. It's kind of small. This one. And make sure my paint's not too awful thick. And then I'm going to put in some of these round things. And there's also some round things up here. And you can put in some of the houses if you want to, but you don't have to. I don't know if I want to or not. Let me look like I'm sure this is how I want it. Make a line here. Maybe put one of these houses here. And then we have some bigger round things here. I think those are supposed to be bushes. They're abstracted a little bit. Looks like I'm off a little, but that's okay. We can just make more round things. Mm -hmm. 
back and forth between my brushes. And just look and see where the colors are. Where it's dark and try to put some of that dark stuff in there. There's a little house there. I think that's a church. Let's see what it is up. So after we get some dark things in here and maybe put some houses in, then we'll add some color down there too. And if you don't want to put houses, you can just put some swirls of color and just do whatever your little heart desires. Okay, so now we're going to start adding some color. I think this needs to be a little darker in here. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of the lighter blues as I go through here to give it a little more dimension. We have this spot over here that's kind of hiding. Let's put some blue in there. It's like a medium blue. So you can mix a little bit of your lighter blue, one, either one of them, and a little bit of the darker blue. You get a medium blue. Let's put that in there. Uh, I think that's a little too dark. Let me try. Color blue also comes out on the other side over here. Gotta be careful not to mess up the tree. And you can get some white in there. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit. Even though my brush has blue on it, I'm going to use the corner of the brush. Pick up a little bit of white. Kind of blend it in there a little bit. A little bit here too, just to give it a little bit of depth. Maybe put a little bit of darker blue on the top. So how's that good color? Does it look right? Mm, looks okay. I usually take more time on my regular paintings. So what should we do next? Maybe we should get some of the, the whites and the medium blues in through here and here. So let's do that. Since I have the blue and the white in front of me, I can mix a little bit of white with one of my blues and look for the light spots the lighter blue areas. Look at the image, light blue. And I know there's quite a bit of light blue through here in between these. I think I might need a new plate pretty soon.
And that's some of the darker ones show through. Or you can add some more darker blue in if you want to. And if it's still wet, you can blend it in a little bit if you want. And then we're going to have some white coming up from the bottom. Some white. Add here and there. Also, these round things, there's one in those too. So I think I'll use a small brush for that. I went a little haywire in this area. It doesn't look so much like the picture, but that's okay. I make it my own. And we have a little white area that I've gone across here. That's one of the nice things about trying to copy a Van Gogh painting is that it's, it's all brush strokes. You don't have to worry about blending very much. I want to put this. You just start putting some white wherever you see white. The very tops of the, the roofs. If you put the houses in, maybe a little bit of white spots on this circle too. And here I just made it up. But there's like a row of little raw and white things. Well, I'm going to do that. And there's some lighter blue area right under here. Can't really tell exactly what it is from the painting, but it does bring out this leaf a little bit. Let's put some lighter color up here. Oh, that's, that's too light. That's going to mix a little bit. Hey, everybody makes mistakes. But they're easily fixable. Put a little bit of blue on it, and there you go. And here it's just kind of choppy. It just looks like. Mine's going across. So that's what we'll do. Just put some choppy color in there. If you cover one of your dark lines, you can go back over it. That's one of the nice things about acrylic paint. You can go back over anything after it dries. Okay. Let's take a little bit of light blue. Make some... Mix some white with, oh, I've got too much black in my brush. Need to get some more white out. White is the color that's used most in most paintings because you need it to, for just about everything. I don't usually use black, but I use a lot of white. Okay, so I have some white. I'm going to take some, mix it with one of the lighter blues. Where was I going with that? 
I know we have some here, but I'd already put some in. I'm just not to need some. Oh, I just painted over my little steeple. I'll go back over this too. But it looks like I need to fresh this. So sometimes you just got to go back and forth with the colors to make it how you like it. I think I'm going to put a little dimension in there. I don't like it being so dark over there. I think I'll just put in a couple of white spots so it looks like that there's something going on. And now I add some more blue here. This part looks kind of dark to me. Needs to be a little lighter. Look along the edge and try to blend it down a little. Over here, it looks like there's a little bit of green that runs through here. So maybe I'll get some of that. Just a little. You only have one green in your pack, and that's the one you're going to use. In the picture, though, that green looks pretty light, so I may have to mix it with a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to get a fresh brush. Take some yellow first, because yellow is easily changed. So if you start with the green, you might just be adding lots and lots and lots of yellow. So start with the yellow. Take it, just a teeny bit of green at the corner of your brush. Mix it with the yellow. Look at that pretty color. I don't know if you can see. Pretty. So I got this pretty light green. I'm going to put some... Where is it? There's some right here. I'm going to just put some choppy little lines in there. Sometimes you gotta play around with the mixing. Okay. That looks too yellow. I can put some dark green lines in there too. And even though it's not in the picture, I'll put some here. There's little green lines here and there throughout. You can start putting some of those in wherever you like. Doesn't have to match the picture. Needs round though. I think I like the round things. I put a lot of them in there. <laughs> so here, I put some of this. And all these round things. I need to finish these round things. So I like to go back and forth with my paintbrushes. I usually keep a couple in my hand at a time so I don't have to keep rinsing a lot. But you can't let it keep, can't hold it too long without rinsing it, because then you'll never get it clean. So I kind of like these little round things, so I'm going to keep going with those. I'm going to add a few more in. And then I'm going to take the dark paint. I should use a smaller brush. 
with a dark blue flag mixture. And some of the stuff down here in this painting, you can't really tell what it is. So you can just add color wherever you want, put in little houses wherever you feel like you want to. Just like Bob Ross does. A little house here, happy little tree there, whatever way you want to do it. Some of the stuff in the painting you can't really make out. Don't really know what it is, just dark areas. Well, you can just do that. You can put more round things. Whatever way you want to do it. I think I need more dark in here. Let's put some more dark blue in there. So just look at the picture and put in what you want. I have to fix that church there. So let me make sure my brush is clean. You can just make up little things wherever you want. Let's see what you have here. And there's just some white little brush strokes over here. Now I think the tree is pretty much dry, so I'm going to put some little white areas. I'm going to water down the white just a little bit and use a small brush and just add some little white areas and that kind of gives it a little bit of dimension and then if, if you think you have too much then just take another brush with some dark paint and kind of mix it in Put some white spots there I can mix it in with the dark So when you get close to being finished, then you can make areas lighter and darker as you feel it would look good. Although we still have to add the yellow in the sky and the yellow around here, but we're getting close. It has that look. Got a little bit of a glare there. Let's see if I can move my my light a little so it's not so glary. How's that? Hmm, I can't see it really good. I don't want to. There we go. That's pretty good. Can you see it? Still. We're still adding some white spots. Where else do we need some white spots? Huh. 
maybe a little bit around these round things. Make sure you don't have too much water on your brush. Like I just did. There's some white things in here. A little bit of white from here. Like there's some glue over here that I missed. Some green. I think I'll put a little bit more of this dark blackish blue over here. Now I'm just making it up as I go along. Look on this side a little bit. Just a lot more dark in there than I can. So you can make some more dark in. And since we have so much green over there, I think maybe we'll just put a little bit over here just pull it all together. Is there any green in the sky? Mm, there is a little bit. And maybe we'll put some in. We already, oh dear, how'd that happen? That's what happens when you, you look away while you're trying to pick up some paint. My brush hit the yellow as I was moving it back and forth. Okay, there we go. Now, where else is there some green? There's a little bit of green around the sun. Just a teeny bit. A little bit there. But you can put it wherever you want. I think I want a little bit here. It just adds a little bit more dimension to your painting. But you don't have to do it. You can do it however way you like. Put some here. I don't think Van Gogh would mind. I'm sure he would want us to paint whatever we felt like painting. So I think I'll put this yellow in here. I think I'll go back to the light blue to put a little bit of light blue coming through. Because I think those are kind of like clouds that are at the mountains. So there might be a little bit of light blue that shines through there. So I'm going to do that. Back and forth with the white if you think you put too much. How's that looking? I'm blending a little bit of that blue. Some green. You can 
you put them all the way up here. And that's the thing with painting. You wind up changing it as you go. And you go to add something, you see, well, I didn't quite like that, so I can change it while I'm here. And I think I'm going to make this area a little brighter blue. So I'm going to use my white and either one of the blues, light blues that I have. Mix it with the white. I got a little green in there too, so it's kind of aqua. But that's okay. That'll look nice. I think it's a little bit green in there anyway. I think I can walk it up. I think that's a little too loud. Since it's so light, I think I'll pick up some blue, just plain blue. While it's still wet, I can go over it. Drag it down over here. I like that color. Maybe since I have a little left on my brush, I'll make some over there. Don't want to mess up anything I already did though. So I'm going to use my dark blue black and just kind of clean up some of this stuff where I want edges. Okay, now I want to add some yellow. So I got a little bit of green in my yellow, so I'm going to get some fresh. I'm going to get a fresh plate too. But I got some green paint. I'm going to get some fresh yellow, and we're going to do the sun and the little suns. I'm also going to put a little bit of fresh white on my plate because you may want to mix it in with the yellow because the yellow you may want some lighter yellow areas so we're going to do that and just I still have some orange from before so let me get a couple of these plates out of the way and which brush should I use? You can use any brush you want. I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to start with the sun over here. Now we're going to just use the straight yellow right off the plate. And I'm going to put it on the middle. And then I'm going to make those short little strokes like I did before. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. And we'll get lighter on the outside. So I have a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow on the brush. Maybe just a little bit more yellow right here. Maybe I'll blot it on there. So the colors go together. I like that. There's also yellow coming down on these mountains. So if they're dry, I can just go right over them. And I'm starting at the top and then just pulling it down, kind of flicking it down a little bit.
to let go of the heat. I'm not watering it down right now because I want to cover kind of. Yellow is really hard to cover things, but that's why we did the white first. And we can paint the yellow over the white, but to paint yellow over blue doesn't work so good. So that's done. And we'll put some yellow over here on these mountains. And there's just little teeny bits of yellow in through this swirl, but it's really light. So I'm going to take some white, mix it with the yellow, maybe just add a little dab yellow here and there, wherever you want to. In the middle of this part of the curve, too. Put it over here because it's closer to the sun. And then we'll put some yellow on these, these little areas. I think we do all of them. But you don't have to. You can use some white if you want to. You can mix it with white and make a lighter yellow. But I think I like the yellow. It brightens things up. Where else do we have yellow? It looks like there's a little bit of yellow in spots here and there throughout here. So we're going to add a little bit in there. I'm going to take some yellow put it here. Bring a little splash in here. Just every so often put in a little dab of yellow. Just a little bit. Where else do we have some yellow? Just kind of spots in here. There's even some in this tree here and there. It's like there's all kinds of different colors in this tree. Hiding behind the dark blue. Maybe a little spot in your hair. Just everywhere you want to put it. Let's put some on these round things. I like the round things. I think I said that already. But they're kind of fun. I don't really know what they are. Look like they could be trees. It kind of reminds me a little bit of those bales of hay when they bale it all up and leave it out in the field. Okay. Is that enough yellow? Yeah, let's make some really light yellow. And do some of this house. This is a white house in the picture, but I think I'm going to put yellow in it. I like the yellow. It brightens things up quite a bit. Maybe put some yellow in there. Maybe put a little white spot. In here too. We'll get some more white in here. Light and light yellow. Some of these houses. The windows. How's that looking? Pretty good, you think? I know it's kind of hard to see. Hopefully you're following along all right. Okay, I think we got enough yellow in there. I'm going to rinse my brush a little bit. And I'm going to pick up some of that orange and do that tree. Not the tree, haha, <laughs> silly. The sun. On our picture, it's just a C. 
But you can do it any way you want. See, that's all, about all he's got on his painting. Is this curve. I'm going to add a little bit more around the edges. I think that's too much. If you do that, then you can just pick up a little bit more yellow. Get your brush out. The orange is a strong color. Pick up a little bit more yellow. You can cut that up a little bit. Yeah, I think I like it with a little bit more orange in it. That's a really dark orange. So maybe I'll mix it with a little bit of yellow so it doesn't get that dark in the other places. You can use it like that if you like, but I think it's a little too dark for my taste. So I mixed a little yellow with it. And then I'm going to put it in the middle of some of these other suns. I think I need a smaller brush for that though. So I get a tiny brush. Little dots in the middle. Is there any orange in through the swirl? I don't see any. But you can add some if you want. I think it maybe needs more yellow. I think it needs more yellow in that spot. Maybe so. Maybe I'll add a little more yellow. Gotta get some more out of the tube. I think I'll get a little more white on my plate while I'm at it. I hope everybody's going along okay and that you're following me all right. I wish this was a live audience and I could answer questions or slow down if you need me to slow down. But you can always hit the pause button, but you still can't answer, ask questions. But I hope I'm going along at a good speed and that you guys can follow okay. Just hit the pause button whenever you need to and catch up if you need to. I may be going a little fast because I'm a painter and I'm used to painting. Uh, so just pause me whenever you need to. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see the colors. I'm going to put it a little bit closer for you right now and see if you can shine some light. Oh, too much light. Let's see. Yeah, I think you can see pretty good now. Okay. So maybe I'll add a little bit more, some more yellow spots through here. I don't like the yellow that much right out of the tube. It's really, really bright. So I'm going to mix it with a little bit of white again and add some little yellow spots. I like the way the yellow spots look. I like the feeling of motion that the sky has. Okay, what do we have left to do? Oh, there's a little bit of red here and there. Now you can keep going if you want. You can add more dark, you can put more houses in there, you can put more trees, whatever you want. But for demonstration, I think that's all the stuff I'm going to put in there. I don't want any more stuff. But you can add whatever you like. You can even put people in there. You can put anything. Happy little trees. You can be a Bob Ross. <laughs> Put whatever you like. So the only color we haven't used is red. We have two reds. Now I, there's a lighter red which is called vermilion and if you want to use that that's fine. There's some areas where you could but that's a really really bright red. So if you wanted to really accentuate some of your sunspots 
You could put a little bit in there if you wanted to. But I like the darker red, which is called carmine red. And if you look at your printout, some of the houses and some of the spots that are unidentifiable and we don't really know what it is, has some red in it. So we can put those little spots in there or make up your own. And that will add a little bit more interest because we have nothing here that's red at all. And so any place we put red, it's really going to pop. So I don't, I don't want to use the lighter red. You can if you want to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use the darker red. Let me find a brush that I like. Yeah, I think this is a good size brush for this. And I'm just going to use the plain red. And I'm going to put it in some of my houses. Just with little strokes like we've been doing, just very lightly. Maybe this house is red too. And if that red doesn't seem bright enough for your taste, go ahead and use the lighter red. I'll put a little bit in there so you can see it. See, it really pops a lot more. Although I'm not sure how much you can see on my video screen. With the red. Let's see. Oh. Nope, can't see it real good. But you can see it a little bit. But I know when you're painting and you have these colors on your plate before you, you can play around with it and see which one works best in your painting. So I'm going to put a little bit there. And you can mix a little yellow with the red if you want to. Uh, you want to look, show a little sunshine shining on the house, like that. And there's some red in some areas over here that we don't know what it really is. This is kind of abstracted a little bit, but we can put some of the red in there. However way you want to do it. What else we got red? Here in this house I need up. Looks like it could have more red. I don't know. I think I'll leave it. Maybe this house can have a bit of red. A little red peak. Maybe put a red spot there. Just make it up as you go along. Let people wonder, what is that? I don't know, whatever you want it to be. So there isn't much red in this painting, but there is a little bit. And if you want to add more, that's up to you. You can add more. I don't know if I want to, though. Maybe I'll put a little dot of it up here in this sun, just for drama. Yeah. Maybe in here. Kind of like little spot here and there. All right. Looks like I have a finished painting. I hope you do too. Let me hold it a little bit closer so you can see it better. And I hope you like what you've done. And thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. See you all later.